Fantastic. Okay, well, we're going to show you some of what we did this week um, in the trade room. So uh, before I get into that, so that you can kind of better understand what it is that I'm going to be showing you that we did in the trade room, uh, I'm going to kind of go over what the indicators are, um, uh, what they do, why they're important to us, and a confluence of indicators that uh, uh, will lead us to prepare to take a trade. Okay, so it's, a, it's kind of a linear decision-making process. So I'm going to go over all of that. But before that, I've got to do the uh, legal stuff. So you've all seen this. This basically says, please don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Most traders lose money, and that means you probably will too. Uh, this is for educational purposes only, and in no way, shape, or form does it mean that if you follow us, you'll be a winning trader, okay? All right, yep, so the agenda. So we're going to talk uh, a bit about limiting our exposure. We're all about um, limiting our exposure to the markets. We're going to uh, talk about what we're looking for what our setups look like, uh, how we qualify them. Then we'll also talk about the targets and stops and how we manage trades. I, uh, I have a video of, of a trade that I did manage, uh, I think it was yesterday or day before. Uh, and then we're going to talk about different variations of, we call them three different trade setups, but it's basically variations of the same thing. Okay, so but we give each one a different name just to make it clear. Then we'll talk about our trade room results and then uh, special offer. And then at the end, we'll have plenty of time, as much time as you want to uh, ask questions. And I will stay here as long as you've got good questions to ask and you're you're satisfied. OK, so limiting exposure. You know, in this day and age, the longer you're in a trade, the more speculative that trade becomes, okay? There are so many influences in the markets these days that we have no control over. We don't know what they're going to do. We're, they're very complex algorithms run by these banks of supercomputers and to get into a trade and expect that the conditions that got you into the trade are going to remain in place for the next 15, 30 minutes, three hours, day, is, is really unrealistic in this day and age, okay? The best information we have about what's about to happen is coming into the market right now. So we're looking to limit our exposure to all of these sharks that are in the markets. You know, they they want us in the markets, right? They want us laying their, our trades out there and just, uh, you know, just until they can come and gobble them up. What this limited exposure does for us, we have much fewer emotions. We are not stressing out about our trades. When a trade goes on, if it lasts more than two minutes, then that seems like forever for us. We want to get in, exploit our edge, and get out as quickly as possible, and the sharks don't even know we were ever there. So we have fewer emotions. We're, we're in and out really fast, which creates a much more relaxing atmosphere and environment for your trading. I think trading for a lot of us is a, is a stressor in our life, particularly the way it's been going for us. For me, it was like seven years ago when I, I mean, I, 
when I struggled for the first seven years that I was learning how to trade or trying to learn how to trade, that was the biggest stressor of my life was trading. It wasn't my kids. It wasn't being married. It wasn't my, my, uh, my businesses or my employees or taxes or any of that. Nope. It was trading. And so I decided if I'm going to keep doing it, I better find a way to do it where I can reduce the amount of stress. Market conditions, uh, meaning what's going to happen in the markets, the further away from right now you get, the more speculative the trade becomes. So the market conditions are immediate. When we make a decision, it's because we know something's about to happen right now. Okay, so it gives you a lot of confidence and it's also a lot easier to master. You know, we're not, we don't have a whole bunch of different indicators that say, if this one's kind of like this and this one's going this way and this one's kind of this way, you know, then maybe you're going to want to enter trade unless it's like this or like this, you know, it's for us, it's yes or no. And it's a linear qualifying process. And I'm going to show you that. So it's real easy to master if you do the work, you know, anything that you're going to master, you're going to have to work at it and practice. Right. And that's, that's all you have to do with this. And I'm going to show you what practice looks like. Okay. So what are we looking for? So we're looking for a confluence of a specific set of events or market conditions. Okay, so what does that mean? So we're reading momentum so that we can anticipate exhaustion. So we're looking for strength in a uh, downward moving market. We're looking for weakness in an upward moving market. Okay. We're looking at the rate at which orders are being processed through the exchange. Why is that important? Well, there's only so much us retail traders can do, right? We have our little computers uh, using our home Wi-Fi and our home uh, internet, and there's only so much we can do as a group to influence the rate at which all of the orders are being processed, right? So if we, if we can identify a rate at which it's unrealistic to believe that retail traders are pushing these orders through, then something else is happening, right? And if something else is happening, that means that the big boys are involved because they're the ones that can increase the rate of orders being processed. And they don't do it by just sheer volume. They do it in a very clever way. But if you know what to look for, then you know there is a, a manipulation happening. And, and then all we have to know is how do people generally react to that manipulation? And that's our edge. Okay. So we're looking for a churning type of volume. So we, we have a lot of people will ask, you know, why don't you watch volume? We actually have an indicator on the chart that is exactly that, but it only tells us the type of volume, not, not just overall volume, but the type of volume that is coming in to the current bar right now. Okay. So that's the important volume. On most of our trades, you're going to see that the current bar or the bar that we're making a trade decision on is bigger than all the previous bars, the last 10, 15 previous bars. And, I, and I'm going to show you this. So we're looking for a, a final up thrust or down thrust before price changes direction. 
So this was one of the things I noticed when I was trying to come up with something, uh, a, a type of trading that I could do. Um, so I, uh, you know, I was failing for so many years. I decided, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to figure this out on my own. So I just started looking at charts, blank charts. And I started wondering, well, why did this bar get really big and then price change directions? And I started seeing it a lot. And now that you know what to look for, go look on the, on any chart, particularly a time-based chart. You'll see these great big bars just before price changes directions. And it only has to change directions for a little bit, right? And, of course, support and resistance, which was the first indicator I, I used when I started creating this, this system. I started seeing these prices would stop and turn, so I start. I thought, well, let's just throw some uh, support and resistance on there and see if those if that lines up with where price stops and turns. And, and a lot of times it did. The last piece of the puzzle for us was when I came up with a better way of reading divergence. I had an idea. I'm not... I'm not smart enough at programming or doing algorithms or any of that, but I did have an idea. And so I took that idea to a really smart programmer and I said, can you program something that'll do this? He's, he did. And almost immediately, the first time I put it on the charts, it was mind blowing how the divergence could pick up almost perfectly when price was going to stop and turn immediately. So this was the, the final piece of the puzzle for us that really put it all together, okay? So let's look at this. How do we qualify this trade setup that we call a rock star trade setup? So the first thing that we want to see is that price is channeling, okay? Price is in a channel. See this? See how price is really not doing much? It's just kind of drifting around. And to us, you know, that seems like nothing much is going on. The big boys are actually doing something here. And if you saw, uh, actually, I have an event coming up with Ninja Trader uh, in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to talk about what's actually going on here in that event and I will send out a uh, an email with an invitation where you can sign up for that. But this is step 1, okay? Step 2 price breaks out of that channel. And you'll notice the bars start getting bigger than the previous bars, especially the ones that were in the channel. Okay? Step 3. Now Right now, we're not doing much until, you know, we, we see all these things. Okay, so there's one. There's step two. This is our, our mom, momentum indicator called Mometer. It, it paints the, the uh, candlesticks from a dark color to a lighter color. The more momentum, the lighter the color. So if you get an almost white when the lighter the color, the more imminent the... Uh, the uh, pullback or the, the, the change in directions, okay? So we're looking at an increase in momentum. Bars are getting bigger. Picks start coming into the bar really fast, okay? Remember I told you about when, when we start picking up when the big boys are likely to be, uh, you know, manipulating the market? Well, that's going to happen. When that happens, you're going to see that. That's our speed tick, okay? That tells us, okay, now that we're overbought on this bar, we have a big push out of this channel. Yet we're overbought, which is this pink outline. We have... When a price being manipulated, we know from this, remember I talked about volume, and not just volume for the sake of volume, but volume 
a certain type of volume. Okay, this is a churning type of volume where there's we had a lot of buying and the buyers sold right into the sellers that were sitting up here waiting. So the buyers are still buying away and the sellers are starting to sell. So we have a lot of churning activity. Well, when the buyers have been buying, 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 they start to get exhausted. When the sellers are just sitting up here, they're not exhausted. So what happens? The buyers are run out of gas and the sellers are able to take over. Now, we have this major resistance line. Now, when we we uh, just use what most other traders use for support and resistance, and why do we do that? Why don't we have some very exotic type of support and resistance lines with, with our own special algorithms? Why would we, why would we not? want that, why would we just use what everybody else uses? What gives support and resistance its value? They're, they work because people think they work. They, they have no real value at all. They're only there because people believe they have value. Therefore, they have value. All right? So if most people are looking at regular, just regular pivots, then that's what I want to know what they're looking at so I can know how they're likely to react to that support or resistance. Right? So we want to see that bar slam into support and resistance and then pull back from it. So it tested up in here. It tested this line. It tried to go across. It did not have enough strength. It's like you ran up a hill as hard as you could, and then you hit a wall at the top of the hill that you had to climb over. You just don't have the gas to get over it. And then the next bar opens with divergence, which is this 1D. And I can look up here and I can see, well, that is the CCI that has diverged from price. The uh, price is going up, but the momentum of the CCI has actually already shifted directions. That divergence generated this rock star. It, this rock star is a combination of a bunch of different indicators. But you, if you don't have the divergence, you're not going to get the rock star. If you don't have the speed tick, you're not going to get the rock star. Okay, so you you uh, this is just a combination of conditions that create the rock star. So at the open of this bar, or better, meaning if price backed up up here, we're going to short this. So I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, this is what I'm. This is what, and this is an ideal trade setup. Not all trade setups naturally are ideal, but this is this would be this would be this is the setup that all of us in the trade room just look at this and start salivating because we know it's this is going to be a good one. All right? So, targets and stops. So, we use the advanced trade management on NinjaTrader so that whenever we take a trade, we also automatically have our targets and our stops already set. All right? Very fast trade, five tick target and a seven tick stop. Again, we're looking to reduce exposure. We're looking to increase our confidence so that when we enter a trade, we can enter it knowing exactly what we did, that we did it right, and whatever happens, happens. All right? We want to get in and out before. The big boys even know we're there and we're done and just wait for the next setup. And that five tick is a hard target. I never, never make it bigger because I want to be out of the market as fast as possible. If you decide you want to trade with us and you want to trade our system and you want to 
work at extending that, that's totally up to you. Five ticks is kind of the sweet spot. And, and that's all we need because as you get good at this and as you start seeing your account grow, you just start adding contracts to your order. Now, the only way we manage our trades is with our stop. I never, unless it's something weird happen, I never uh, just mark it out of a trade. If I'm going to get out of a trade, I'm going to start shortening my stop, right? So, uh, and I only make it smaller. I never think, oh, well, price is about to change. I know it's going to change directions and start making your stop bigger and bigger and bigger. And don't put on any runners. I have tried that. It doesn't pay off. And I don't put on trailing stops. I've also tried that and it just doesn't pay off. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't understand. Aren't you picking up reversals? I went, no, we're not. We don't do reversals. We do pullbacks. Exactly. The goal is to slowly and steadily, as you're learning, as you're gaining experience, to grow your trading account and see a consistent growth, which is something I never saw when I was a struggling trader. I saw maybe one day I would have a great day, make a lot of money. And then two days I'd lose it all and then some. And then another day I might have make a decent amount of money. And then the next day I lose it all and then I make some. So no consistency, right? So the point of doing this and doing it this way is you got to learn, you got to gain experience. You're going to do it slowly. You're going to do it with a single contract at a time. Once you've proven to yourself that you can be a winner at this and that you can be consistent, then grow to two contracts. So I had a goal when I was doing this, when my first, as I was going through this, uh, when I was kind of developing it, my goal was to increase the size of my trading account by $2,500 using a single contract. Now, it took a while. But all that time, I was gaining experience and I was understanding the system better and I was understanding the market flow and the and the order flow and, you know, the, uh, um, you know, just watching and I was just gaining more and more and more experience while I'm working on that single contract. Then you trade two contracts and you start gaining more and more and more experience and you go to three contracts. So there's only one thing to learn. Right? You don't have to learn a whole lot of different things. This is called a naked rock star trade setup. For those of you that aren't, that don't trade with us that are that are new to this there is something different about this that looks very much like the last one it looks almost identical you'd probably say this is an identical chart but there's one very important thing missing can anybody tell me what that is if you if you're new to to uh what we're doing here anybody anybody you guys are awfully quiet no resistance how got it no resistance up here. That turns it into what we call a naked rock star. Naked meaning that it doesn't have the protection of support and resistance for this trade. So I noticed that we started out with the rock star trade, and I, but I did notice that, man, a lot of these trades, whether they have support or resistance or not, are going to end up turning into winners. So I did a long study of these, and so we created a set of rules to trade these that if it doesn't have support or resistance behind it, it must have at least one other uh, condition of confluence, okay? So price, again, price is channeling, same thing. Price breaks out of the channel, bars are getting a bit bigger, 
momentum increases. Same thing. That's the, the color of the candlesticks from black to light color. The lighter the color, the more imminent the pullback. Bars become even larger. Ticks begin coming in very fast. Again, this is we're this is not a different trade setup per se because we're still watching the same things. We're still um, doing this in a linear. If this happens, then this. If this happens, then this. Okay. So we're still watching the same, the same setup. Now this is where it becomes different. Since there is no resistance on this trade, I need one of two things to happen. Either price becomes overbought, which is this pink outline. Okay. A lot of people use overbought and oversold, but they put an oscillator down at the bottom of the screen. I don't I didn't want to have to take up a bunch of screen space for an oscillator just to tell me if it was overbought or oversold. We got it right here. It's a yes or no. Right where my eyes are looking anyway to make a decision. I don't have to look down here. They're right here. That's all of these are like that. This is called our heads up display indicators. All right, so price pushes up, it gets overbought, and or okay, this is an and or it can get overbought, and then we have this pullback alert. Remember I told you about the churning activity. These are two different indicators, two different sets of conditions, but if, if we don't have resistance, I need to have either this or this, preferably both, okay? So no more bar slams into major resistance. The bar opens again with divergence. We put on our trade right here. We're going to short it right here. As soon as this bar opens, this prints. And you'll see that in the video I'm, I'm going to show you here in a little bit. All right, now, there's one more trade set up. Now, we actually have a couple more, but this is the only one that you're really going to need. 90% of our trades are these three trades. Looks very much the same, doesn't it? This was our trade setup pre-Rockstar. The speed tick is the first indicator I developed. This is the one where we're reading what the big boys are doing. And if orders are being processed way faster than we can do it, then it must be the big boys. So this is an indicator I developed for that. And this is, I mean, I was trading um, these pullbacks just off of support and resistance at first. But I kept thinking there's got to be more information. There's got to be a reason this bar is really big. There's got to be, you know, there's something else going on here. And I wanted to find out what it was. So I looked and I, like, this is where the big boys are doing their thing. So I started trading. Whenever this was happening, I would short it as long as I had support or resistance behind my trade, five ticks or less behind my trade to help me in the event this trade decided it wanted to go against me. The price has already hit the line here and then bounced off of it and pulled back. So it has already proven to me that. This line has value, right? This line has value. So if price goes against me, I want this line to help push it back in my favor, okay? So that's why it has to be five ticks or less because we have a seven tick stop, which would be on the other side of this line. We're hoping that if we go five ticks or less, and it goes five ticks, hits the line, and then bounces off. It'll go back in our favor. Okay, so that's a speed tick trade. Again, price is channeling. Bars are relatively small. It all looks the same. Momentum increases. Bars become larger. Ticks coming into the bar very fast. The bar becomes overbought. Bar slams into major resistance. When I say slam, it's because look how price is just drifting around and it's crossing this and resistance line this is drifting around but then it it runs up here hard hard but we're just three bars prices jump this high that's what i mean by slam into this line 
Okay. So before we start, I show you the trades. You're probably wondering, does this stuff really work? I mean, should I, should I be wasting my time learning about this? I mean, it is Saturday after all. Don't you have other things to, to do? But let's take a quick look, all right? So these are, I'm going to show you some results from our trade room. I'm not sure if Marshall is here today, but um, we have a gentleman in the trade room who very kindly put together these numbers for us. Um, and uh, he's in our trade room every day, has been for four years or so, four or five years. And so he started uh, in 2020 tracking the results. Now, keep in mind, these are results from traders that are trading our system in our trade room, and most of them have been doing it for a long time, okay? And they practice, and they work at it, all right? So we're not saying that if you start trading with us that you're going to get the same results. If you don't work at it and you don't practice, you can't be upset about not getting the results that you're not working to get, okay? I put the little disclaimer over there on the side. So this is what we're looking at since 2020. We've got over 6,000 trades, uh, approximately 250 days per year, three hours a day, which is a little over six trades per trading session, which is average. I mean, that's kind of what we do. A uh, couple of trades per hour, five ticks per trade um, on a winner, average five ticks. Uh, per trade on a losing trade because we manage, remember I say we manage our stops and on, and I'll show you this on a video. Um, we are going to manage our stops and I'm going to shorten my stop so that I don't take a full stop. So when you average it out, it's about five ticks for winner, five ticks for a loser. All of the fees and commissions have been deducted from these totals. I'm going to show you. Okay. So this is the this is the the actual tracking of each type of trade setup that we trade, whether it was a winner or a loser, and what the rate was for each trade setup. Okay, and so the total is almost eighty percent, which uh, ain't too bad. So if I know a lot of you are all about well, how much money? I'm all about, I need to know if I can make money at this. So this on a single contract, just a single contract, that's $151,000. And if you actually trade in more contracts, like I do, I'm a multiple contract trader and many of our traders trade multiple contracts. Then it's pretty easy to see how you can make money at this, right? All right, now the fun part. So these are trades from this week. All right, before we do that, any questions? Yeah, yeah, and that's what you have to do, TJ. And I'm going to show you what he's doing right here. What I have set up here that I'm showing you is my workspace for my practice sessions. So if you're wondering how to practice your trading, this is it, all right? So no questions. So let's take a look. Now, this was Monday this week. That slide I just showed you when I went over the trade setups kind of looks just like this, didn't it? The stuff we do, we've been doing for 15 years and we do it over and over and over again. And it looks the same because it is. Once you learn it, you've got it. That doesn't mean you don't have to stay sharp and you don't have to practice. That's how you stay sharp. Think of it like a pro athlete. Okay. Pro athletes don't just learn how to do their sport, play tennis and then just show up for games. Or a, a, a professional uh, musician doesn't learn how to play the guitar and only show up for gigs. 
You always have to practice if you're going to stay sharp at something and even get better, right? Pro athletes are always trying to get better. Professional musicians always trying to get better. Professional traders always trying to get better, all right? And you'll see why that practice is important. Now, here's a trade. I'm just going to let it let it play here. And we're just going to watch. Now, down here at the bottom of every chart, we have a countdown timer. This countdown timer lets me know when the open of the next bar is because that's where trade decisions are made. Right? So I've got a confluence of events, right? I've got a, we pulled out of this channel. We're pushing up. Now, we have a lot of confluence, right? But I did not have, for a rock star trade, I didn't have the rock star here. I had a speed tick, but I only have minor resistance behind the trade, not made, not one of our support pivots. This is just high of the day. All right. Now this bar pushes up. It's overbought. Speed tick, pullback alert. Have that churning action. And then the bar opens right up under this high of the day. Okay, now let me back that up so you can see. Now this is this is exactly how you practice your trading. You put it on market replay, and I know or playback, and I know some of you tried it a couple of times, and it's like, oh, this sucks. It's hard to use. Well, it's all we've got. So I put on the trade. And now I'm out of the trade and it's done. And I put that money in the bank and sit and wait for the next one. All right. Again. Yeah. See, it doesn't have to be only up. This was kind of an extended. This is also Monday. This was kind of an extended long push out of here. But look at the bars. They're not really all that big and then suddenly we get this really big bar here and we're pushing down the low of the day so this was our point of entry right here and that's how fast the trades are that's not speeded up that's that's why we're in and out really fast before anybody even knows we're there Watch this bar. Now we're pushing up. We have a speed tick. We're overbought. And now we're just waiting for the open of the next bar. So you'll see I've, I'll put my uh, my mouse right on the dome. I know it's going to be, be a sell order. So I'll put it on this side of the dome. I don't know where exactly, but as I watch the countdown timer, I could be pretty close to knowing about where the next bar is going to open. We're measuring strength to anticipate weakness. That's still Monday. Still on Monday. Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, this is Tuesday. Price is just kind of trashing around here, not really doing much of anything. This is on the CL. We can tell we're in a channel because of this box here. This is, uh, we really don't want to take any trades if, if price is inside this, this zone here. We want to be outside again because we want to measure strength. So if, if price is moving real strong, it's going to be outside of this box. So when we're just channeling around and price is inside here, we're probably not going to be taking a trade. All right, now we're pushing up to our major line of resistance. Now, this number right here is, is important for this particular trade because this tells us that this line is really strong. Oh, I don't add the star. No, that's an indicator. This is called a rock star indicator. It pops up 
on the open of this bar to tell us, you know, to at least tell us that the conditions are met for the rock star to print. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't do that. That's the actual indicator. All right. This looks just like what I showed you on the slide, right? Looks like the same trade, doesn't it? It's not. This was Tuesday. That slide I made, I don't know, two years ago. This was a trade on Tuesday. Looks just like it. Waiting for the open of the next bar. I'm watching my countdown timer. Bar opens. There's our, our uh, uh, rock star. I do have some, uh, these trades are in order by day, but not by anything in particular I wanted to show you. That's just by day. So I do have some other things uh, that I want to show you as they pop up, and I'll let you know what they are. I have a, I do have one or two losers in here. This may be it. Don't know for sure. Don't remember. And, you know, I could show you all winners. But, yeah, there's a loser. Now, I will take this trade every single time. Even though this one lost, I'll take it every single time. Because 80% of the time, that trade's going to win. So this looks a little different, right? It's not oversold. But I did have the pullback alert. Remember, it's either or. Or both. So the pullback alert qualified this as a, as a valid naked rock star trade. So I had the, the setup on the open of this bar. I put the trade on. Then you just kind of wait. You, you just let the the conditions or the market just do what it's going to do. And we can't control that. All we can do at best is to know what usually happens. Nobody ever knows what always happens. I know that would be nice. And I know a lot of us traders have been out there looking for something that we would know would always be a winning trade every time. So that was a loser right there. And I would take it again in a heartbeat. But by my rules, no matter what, if the next trade is a setup, you take it. Even if you just took a loss. Being sad or upset is not part of my trade plan, making decisions based on how I feel. The trade plan is, if there's a setup, you take that trade, and that's all there is to that. All right, again, big push up. Now, we've got another indicator on there called climactic volume. That means this trade is open to a fourth setup that I didn't tell you about yet, but we traded it in the trade room. Uh, so what happens here, let's see, this was on Wednesday. So I'm going to get down to the last few seconds. Now, <clears throat> this trade has, it's going to qualify already. I can pre-qualify this and actually know that within this amount of time, I can go ahead and put on my sell order here because of this climactic volume. This is just, this is called a naked, well, it actually will be a speed tick trade. If this line wasn't here, it would be a naked speed tick trade and it would still qualify. I don't remember what this trade is, to be honest. Okay. So you see, I already put the trade on, but the next bar hasn't opened. That's because regardless of where it opens, unless it's way down here, which I knew it wouldn't be, I went ahead and put the trade on because I knew it was going to qualify. So I actually ran it a couple of seconds ahead. 
those of you from the trade room, if you've, if you've heard me get into those um, naked speed tick trades a little quick, that's what I'm doing. I will qualify it because the Wix percent behind this wick is green. And I know it's going to be green because there's only two seconds left. It's going to stay that way. So I went ahead and shorted it. As it turns out, it was a rock star trade, a beautiful rock star trade with all kinds of confluence. This was a textbook trade set up for us. Tough. So what are you saying there? What are you, what are you trying to do? You're looking for easy. We trade six instruments in the trade room. <laughs> this isn't easy, but it's simple. And it becomes easier the more you practice. You don't need to react quickly. All you need to know, look, and that's the thing. That's, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand and they get confused about. Look, right here. I've got 33 seconds. All of these conditions are in place. I've got 33 seconds to look at this and go, okay, step one's in place, step two's in place, step three's in place, step four's in place. All I need is step five and I can pull the trigger. How much time do you need for that? I got 33 seconds. I'm just sitting there. Look, I moved my mouse over because I knew there's a good opportunity. And I'm just sitting there now. I'm just sitting. I'm just sitting. There's no panic. There's no rushing. There's no hurrying. I'm just sitting there. Still sitting. Doesn't take much time. I'm just sitting. Okay. Conditions exist. Go ahead and enter the trade. But that doesn't look too hard, does it? A lot of people get confused by this or or get feel intimidated because they think that you've got to, it's like rushing and being all, you know, panicky about it. There's nothing. It's relaxed, but deliberate. That's all it is. It's deliberate. The more you practice it, and this is what you're seeing right here. This is practice. This is exactly what my practice sessions look like, and this is what, Everybody else's, and this is what you do to get better and better and better at execution. We use one minute because remember what I was saying, the reaction to what's coming into the market right now is going to happen right now. Now, we do have some people that claim that they are successfully using two and five minute charts. So I can't verify that claim. I can't tell you you know, anything other than I've been told that. But the best information coming into the charts about what's about to happen right now is coming in right now. And that's where I want to make the decision. All right, this is, what day is this? This is uh, also Wednesday. Uh, sure, Chris. Just um, send me a, a, an email with what you're struggling with. And maybe I can either give you some advice or I'll do a remote support session with you and go over some things. There's a couple of things that causes Ninja Trader playback to be fussy. And once you know what those are, it gets a lot easier. No, 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 no. Uh, Keith, give him the support at the intention. In fact, it's up there in the chat. I don't look at the info at email address that often, but the support at I look at all the time. All right, so here's, let me back that up a little bit. So here... May have seen that and gone, wait, how did he get out of that before it even went five ticks? 
show you. Now, what we're looking for is the open of the next bar is our point of entry. Open of the next bar or better. So if the next bar opens and in this circumstance drops before I can get a, an order on, even better. That means I got a better price than the open of the bar, which is perfect because then I don't have to go to what my original target would have been. All right, look, the price dropped down here. So I got a better fill than the open of the bar. So I love getting better fills. And again, if you rush, if you hurry, okay, price is channeling, pushing down. I, I, you know, this is the same thing. How many of these do you guys want to see? Okay, yeah, Richard, um, so we need volatility. We need other traders to be in the market. We need liquidity, which is why most people trade between 9 a.m. and noon. That being said, the trades work great in the afternoons, but uh, you'll get fewer opportunities. The open of the London session, usually pretty good. Any other time, I wouldn't bother. You just don't have enough people trading. And if you don't have enough people trading, even the, even the big boys are not interested. So we're looking for lots of liquidity and volatility to have an edge. In a slow market, it's hard to get an edge of any kind with any system. One of these, I start managing the trade, uh, and I'm not sure which one it was. But again, this doesn't this look just like all the other ones I showed you? You don't have to learn a lot. You just have to become skilled at something very simple. Very simple. Yeah, Bob, that was, uh, I, I am too, and I and I invented it. Um, Bob, when did you, 2014, 2013? That's somewhere back in then is when you started with us. And you, you still always come to these events. I appreciate you. And I'm just talking as I'm letting this trade work out so you guys can see what it's really like. Back, yeah, that was a long time ago. So this was just kind of crawling along. And now for, the, for us, this has been a long trade. For a two-minute trade, Hoo-wee. Or a minute and a half. Hoo-wee. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're really wanting it to be over with. In and out. We get really used to having very fast trades. This is a rock star setup. Okay, we have our resistance right there. This was on Thursday. Oh, I think this is a loser. I think this becomes a, I don't remember. I think this is the one that this trade lost, but then another, another one was right behind it.
Yeah, I think I, I noticed that you signed up for our trade room, but don't come tomorrow because that's Sunday. I mean, you can just be kind of lonely. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Yeah, back in 2014, so 10 years now. Yeah, so this stuff actually works, doesn't it? I'm glad that you, you old-timers, nothing personal. Old-timer to intentional trader, not you personally. But if you've been trading with us that long, you're probably an old-timer too. <laughs> so we've been doing this for 15 years, guys, and it's the same thing. As you can see, you don't have to learn a lot about day trading. You don't have to have all of that information that we think we're supposed to have to be successful day traders. Man, I was all about collecting stuff, information. And, and I felt like I needed to have everything that I learned about. So at one point I had 12 monitors of stuff. And I was no better at trading than I was the very first day. I just knew more. I had more stuff. I had more information, but I still didn't know how to use it or use it successfully. I use the analogy of having a kitchen full of ingredients and trying to use every ingredient in every recipe you have. You know, it doesn't make sense. So I've got a few ingredients here that make the perfect cupcake, and that's all I need. Even though I have 500 other ingredients, I only want to make the perfect cupcake. I want to specialize in it. And that's what we're doing. And that's all we do. So now at this point, I think uh, I'm, I'm still in this trade and I haven't managed it because I'm hoping this resistance, that price pulls back from this resistance. But it may not. Again, I just, I just did these. This was just part of my practice sessions, and so I just recorded them. Um, I don't remember all of them. Yeah, this is the one I managed. Okay, watch the watch me move the stop. So now I'm at at minus one. Now I'm at break even. So even if I take a loss on this, now I'm at plus one. Even if I take a loss on this, which was a plus one, I ended up at plus one. So that's how I manage a trade. So I manage it because the conditions that got me into the trade no longer exist. They no longer exist. So under those current conditions, I never would have gotten into that trade. So that's my, that's how I decide if I'm going to get out. I look at, it, I go, wow, I wish I wasn't in a trade now because the conditions that got me into the trade are now no longer exist. So I'm going to manage my stop and try to get out of this. I do not. Uh Oh, you lost me. How? Voice? Did you lose my voice? Everybody else can hear me? Can you guys hear me? I'm back? Oh, good. It's good to be back. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. All right. So that's enough of that. I think you guys got the point, right? It's the same thing. So we have an edge, which is really what I spent seven years looking for. We have an edge that's been proven for 15 years. We do it every day. 
if you're looking for an edge where you can make a lot of money, good luck. I mean, that's great. But the edge you want to have is one that you can find where you can become consistent and then try to make a lot of money. Don't try to find a trading system where you can just get started and make a lot of money. It's not going to happen if you haven't noticed yet. All right. So we have a, uh, up there, I pinned it to the top, and, and Keith has probably already beat me to it because he's awesome like that. Um, oh, that's great. You added some other stuff. Nice. Man, you're getting better at this. I would hire you, but I don't think I need to because you're doing it for free. <laughs> I'll just save the money. So we got a, a, a page on our website that's got tons and tons of videos on it. Um, this, in fact, this presentation today will also be on that page. So if you'll get an email, um, later, um, with a link to it, but, uh, or you could just keep looking at this page, uh, every now and then, and you'll see it'll show up over here on this left panel. So we have presentations that we do like this all the time, uh, a series of introductory videos for getting started, uh, Trade of the day videos, which is more of just what you saw this whole session. More and more and more of the same thing over and over and over. Do something really small, become the best at the world, in the world at it, and do it over and over and over again. That's it. That's how you get good at day trading. All right, so we've got 20% uh, off uh, our programs. By far... I know it's the most expensive, but it's by far the best value. We have most of the traders here that are joining us here today are in the Pro Trader program. I think Keith and Bob and Pam and uh, Edzard and Ken and Lance and a uh, bunch of you guys, Wayne, a uh, bunch of you guys are Chris. Yeah, are, are in our uh, Pro Trader program already. And it's the biggest bang for the buck for sure because you get not only everything we have, but everything we will ever have in the future. You heard talk about the new dome that we're developing. Our Pro Traders get it free. And all of everything that we have here, get it for free, plus uh, unlimited uh, trade room time and everything else. Basically, if I have it to offer you get it for part of the price. So, um, and you can take 20% off of those prices. Okay. Now let's do, I've been answering questions along the way. So maybe we're, we're all done with questions or, or good, but I'm happy to stay for as long as you need to answer your questions. If you don't have any, then I did an awesome job. Any questions? No questions? Everybody's ready to go start their weekend, huh? My grandson's birthday today, and he is sick. He's turning six today and got a 103 fever. So not much of a birthday. That was my plan for today, but now I probably got a free day. Maybe I'll go play golf or something. All right, somebody's typing, so maybe there's a question. Now. Uh, well, there are two other setups that we didn't really go over because they don't happen all that often. Um, it's not the, they're not the type of setups that you would want to uh, get into our trading our system for. Um, but they're the setups that I started with a long time ago, and I still trade them, and I've taught them to our traders, and some of our traders don't even trade them because we really don't need to. We get plenty of other setups. So I showed you the other the other stuff, any indicators you saw that I didn't talk about, 
they're just helper indicators to help us make better and faster uh, and more concise decisions on getting into a trade. They don't necessarily generate a um, one of our qualifiers, but it helps us to enter a trade with more confluences. Okay, so that's they're helpers, and and I wouldn't trade without them. All right, they're not necessarily a qualifier, but they definitely help, which is why they were developed. For example, that Mometer indicator, the one that goes from the black candlesticks to the lighter color, that's actually not part of the qualifier as it as it relates to the rules. It is a qualifier as it relates to getting your attention to make sure you're paying attention when that starts happening. And it helped a lot of people because I had a lot of people struggling with with understanding and reading momentum. So I thought, well, I got to figure out a way that people can see momentum. So that's why we came up with that indicator. But technically speaking, it's not part of the trade setup rules. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize I had it on the dome. I forgot about that. Yeah, OTS on the dome is is wonderful. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Have a great rest of your weekend. Come join us in the trade room. And hopefully uh, some of you have decided this is all you need to become a successful trader and you're going to come be part of our little family. Okay, Richard, there's a, a, that's the one qualifier in the Pro Trader program. You get one set of indicators. If you want two sets, there is an upcharge for a second set, but it's only like uh, $500, $700, I think. Um, or this is what I recommend to people, and this is what I do. When I travel, I use my laptop to remote onto my workstation at home, and I don't need a set of indicators on my laptop because I just use my workstation <laughs> Man, Keith, you're on it, buddy. You're getting really good at this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so TeamViewer is free, and it works great, and that saves you the money from having to put the indicators on more than one workstation. If you want them on more than one, we have to add in the support that it costs and the other stuff. So, yeah, there is a, a, a what I consider a small charge to put it on a second computer. But I don't. I don't have them on my laptop. But I use my laptop when I travel and just remote onto my trading computer. This is not my trading computer, the one I'm talking to you from. I have lots of computers. As you might imagine, when you develop software, you have to have a lot of different computers to test on. So, all right, everybody, have a great rest of your weekend, and I hope we see you all again very soon. Bye now.